Hey everybody, Grave Rose here, and today we're going to talk about rekeying an ABUS padlock. This is with the uh, Schlage uh, keyway and cylinder. So to do this, the first thing that you need to do is you need to get new pins. Now I went to the Home Depot and got a repinning kit, and it costs about twenty dollars Canadian. So it's not too expensive, and with that, what you'll get is a series of three keys. You'll get a series of colored pins. I don't know if you can really see that and you'll get a bright yellow instruction sheet which tells you the pins that you need to put in and in which order to fit the keys that came in your kit. Now these are all going to be random depending on um, which kit you buy. I mean they're the, the kit's going to be the same but each kit is keyed differently is really what I was trying to get at there. So the lock itself I bought off of Amazon for about 25 uh, Canadian and what's really interesting is when you get the lock it comes with the lock and the key and you'll also get the option to do a six pin by default it's a five pin and the, the key that you get as you can see here uh, is zero bitted which means the top of the key actually has no depth in the grooves right so if you take a look over here with the key that we got with our repin kit there's all sorts of different sizes and, and valleys, so you're going to have uh, uh, anywhere between a zero, which is what we have all the way at the top on this key, and then down, whoops, down to a seven, which is going to be a lot closer down to the bottom area here along the ridge line. So, first thing that we need to do is open up this lock, and once you've opened it, you can actually remove the key. So we're going to set that to the side. And the next thing that we need is a Phillips head screwdriver because inside here, let's see if I can get it properly lit here on the camera, the light source, there you go, you can see the Phillips head screw in there. So we're just going to start by taking that guy out. Now, if you're not very hardware inclined, just like me, I'm not very hardware inclined, you got to remember righty tighty, lefty loosey for the most part. So we are turning this counterclockwise, lefty loosey, we want to loosen that guy up and the core after just enough turns, should just fall right out. There we go. And then if you turn this upside down, give it a knock. Uh, it didn't happen right now, but sometimes the screw will fall out. So just be aware of that when you're taking this apart so that you don't lose the screw. Because, uh, yeah, the last thing you want to do is lose a screw that you're going to need. So we'll take our original key back. Again, this is the zero bit of key that came with the lock. And if we put it in here, on one side, you'll see there's a little window area we can turn that back and forth but it doesn't give us the pins if we turn it over here you can see there's no window what we do happen to have though and again I'll try and get this close up on the camera is a small little mechanical button you can just if you've got a screwdriver with a fine enough point on it or if you've got long enough nails that will dig in there you just press that down and continue to turn the key counterclockwise at the same time so I'll do that again real quick so as you're applying counterclockwise pressure, right, so we're going this way, right, we push the button down, and of course now it doesn't, there we go, and eventually you'll see when you come to the window side, get that with the proper light, you can see that we've got all five pins and the sixth pinhole on the end over here. So the first thing we're going to do is we're just going to take that out, we're going to dump all these guys out. Okay, one, two, three, four, five. We're just going to set those guys aside, so I don't want to lose those. Again, much like losing a screw that we talked about just a moment ago, don't want to lose them in case we want to replace them after. And then we go back to our bright yellow card, which again is going to tell us the order that we have to repin this in order to fit the keys that came with our repinning kit. So we take our sealed little bits of pins. Crack that open. You know what? Do it the right way and get your multi tool, should you happen to have one, which everybody should have. Oops, let me cut this open. There we go. Again, uh, multi tool. Sorry, <laughs> going a little bit off the rails here. Uh, these are extremely handy. Uh, this is a DeWalt. I picked it up again at the Home Depot uh, many moons ago, and I think I paid $20 or $30 for it. It's got pliers in it, it's got a knife, it's got scissors, it's got a flathead screwdriver, it's got a Phillips head screwdriver, uh, it's got a file, it's got all sorts of good stuff. So if you 
are a lock picker, if you're a handyman, if you're a network engineer, believe it or not, because I do network engineering and security and all sorts of other fun stuff, having a multi-tool is definitely going to come in handy at some point or another. So getting back on track. Now that we've opened up the pins, I'll just drop them out here. I'm working on an extra large mouse pad, and they sell these on Amazon. This is the, I don't even know what model it is. Oh, A-U-K-E-Y. A -U -K -E -Y. Again, Amazon, 20 bucks, dirt cheap. So, first thing we need is a silver one. So again, we take a look at our chart. The keyway goes in this way. The first one that we need is silver. So we find that guy and drop him in. There we go. Then we need red. Find that guy and drop him in. Purple. I know this isn't the most exciting to sit here and watch. Got that guy there. Uh, gold and then green. Gold. Come on. I do have tweezers. I just didn't bother to get them out for the video. And green. And there we go. So I'll see if I can catch the colors on the camera here so you can see as well. Like a happy little holiday tree. Bob, Was Bob Ross were around, maybe that's what he would say. And then we can test that by putting our, our new keys in that we got from our replacement package. And as you can see, hopefully, they're all lined up properly with the shear point. So now we should be able to close that up. Pull the key out. I said, pull the key out. There we go. <laughs> Put this guy back in. Grab your Phillips head screwdriver. If you, the screw came out, uh, you can drop it back in there. It's super easy. Um, I mean, it's just you're dropping a screw in. But at the same time, sometimes there's a, uh, uh, it might get caught on the latch on the inside where the shackle goes. But it usually doesn't. Oops. There we go. And again, if you're not hardware inclined like I am, righty tidy lefty loosey. Is that even going in? Nope. Not too sure why that's not going in. Oops. Well, the screw just popped out, which is fun. Oh, I see. The Z bar got in the way. All right. There's also, yeah, I should point that out, a little Z bar here. I don't know if you can see that on the camera. That determines whether or not you can take the key out while the shackle is open. So I'm not too worried about it right now. So we'll just put this back in. Like so. There we go. Drop the Phillips head screw back in. And then just tighten it up. When it's all the way tightened, the bottom of the lock should be flush with the core that you just put back in, the new core, or the same core, sorry, with the new pins. Lock it up. See it pops open. And now the key does not come out. Oops, I'm out of frame here. The key does not come out when the shackle is open. So if we wanted to, we could put that Z bar back in and the key would still come out. So now we can do that. Reshackle it. And that is how you repin an ABUS 8345 series lock. I hope you guys found this informative. If you did, please leave a like or a comment. And as always, have a great day.